Welcome to the Land House channel. I'm Seth. This is the SanSmart Genmitsu 6050 CNC machine. This has a 600 by 500 by 115 millimeter working surface and comes with a spindle here, but also comes with a mount where you can add your own router spindle there too as well. This is going to be an overview of this machine. In the future, I'm going to be installing this in my new wood shop and we will do a much more in-depth look at this CNC. But for now, let's go ahead and get things hooked up to the computer and run our first job. Now, if you want to watch the full assembly video, which was quite lengthy, then I will have a link to that in the description down below. All right, let's jump into the overview of this very large tabletop CNC machine. Let's start this tour here on the front of the machine. You can see the Provar XL 6050 Plus logo on this aluminum frame, which is actually about a half inch thick. Very impressed with that uh, grade of aluminum. The MDF spoiler board here on top is nice to have and it is replaceable if you need to. There is a track system so you can use your clamps anywhere along here. I've got a bag of those right there which we will try out in just a moment. There's also a dust board right here which will keep dust from flying off of the machine. So if you move over here, there is a very nice thick aluminum side rail and that right there is what's going to slide back and forth with this machine. So there are stepper motors here. This one right here is your Z. Move over here, there's a single motor for the Y. And then over here on this side is the single motor for the X axis. There are drag chains to protect the wiring on both the top and side here. Now, this does come with a spindle, but you can actually replace that with the included clamp there. So you can put a uh, router in there to have a lot more power. Limit switches are found on each axis to prevent this from going out of bounds. We move over here to this side, we can see one of the motors. Now, if you want to manually jog this, you can turn the knob on the back of the motor. You can see here, it will manually jog that out of the way. Now, there is a control box over here where all of the cables go into. It's got a power button here, power cord. You got your spindle power. You've got your uh, motor X, motor Y. You've got your motor Z. Here is the limit switches, and you can do a Z probe as well. There's also a USB on the front of this box to allow you to connect to your computer. Now this CNC machine is quite heavy, and I recommend that if you're gonna be moving it, definitely have two people because it may uh, be damaged if you drop it or hurt your back. Like I said before, the working surface here is 600 by 500 by 115 millimeters, which is almost 24 by 20 on that surface. Now one thing that you may notice is that these uh, boards here are attached on the front and the back and there's nothing underneath the middle here. So there is a slight bit of flex down, but you would really have to be pushing on that to uh, cause any issues. So I don't think it's gonna have a problem whatsoever. The front of the control board, the front of the control box does have an emergency stop. It has a reset, a pause and a resume and also a speed setting on the side there as well. And down here is where your USB is going to connect. I'm going to use the included USB cable to attach the CNC machine to my computer. So let's go ahead and get that plugged up. Now in the future, I'll be using a much bigger desktop than uh, what I've got here. So let's go ahead and get this connected to my mini PC. A USB drive containing the drivers was also included with this kit. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that up to my computer and we will hopefully get this started being able to get these uh, programs on here. There we go. I installed the drivers and software and then loaded up my easel program to be able to begin modeling. And for some reason, I just couldn't get the control box to work. So turns out I didn't have my power plug totally pushed in. Now it's working. All right, very good. So I can actually jog the machine now by using these uh, push buttons. So you can see here, 
that pressing these buttons will jog. Very good. All right, so I guess we're ready now to begin. Let's test the spindle here. Yep, that seemed to work just fine. We are now ready to begin modeling and test out this CNC machine. The 6050 came with a little kit of bits that I want to uh, open up here and see what we can use on this spindle. Looks like it's eighth inch. All right, let's use something like uh, this one right here for now and see what we can do. I'm gonna bring out the included wrenches so we can get this opened up. All right, just for a simple test here, let me load up easel and uh, just draw out a shape and we can give this a test here. So I've just got a simple circle. Let's make it decently small and see what the cut would look like here. All right, material thickness, we do have half inch. That's correct. It is not secured yet, so let's go ahead and secure this down to our surface. Let's bring out our bag of clamp material here. I have not opened these up yet to see what all comes in this kit. Looks like we've got this right here, which is a metal bar that will attach to our material. Very cool. Nice and thick. All right, so let's go ahead and use these little clamps here. So it has the T-track nut down here, and that will simply slide into the groove There we go. And then this right here will slide into that quarter inch. I'm assuming something like that. All right, let me get the rest of these locked down and we will give this a try. The material is now clamped down. Let's go to the next here. We are using an eighth inch bit. Confirm that size. Let's go ahead and jog this machine over to the front corner. I'm just gonna select a spot right over here somewhere and we should be good to go. Okay, there we are. We are now touching. Let's use this as our new position. Let's raise the bit a bit. There we go. All right, and let's go ahead and turn on the spindle. Very cool. The spindle is on. Now I'm gonna keep my hand on the kill switch just in case. Right, the job is now done. It was a pretty quick circle to cut out there. All right, let's loosen this up here and see how we did. I don't know if I'm using these clamps right here. It's a little awkward the way I'm doing it. So I may have to uh, play around with that later and see what the best way to work with this is. Very cool. Seems to have made a circle as we anticipated. All right, let's talk about my first run with the Jinmitsu 6050, starting with installing the software on my mini PC. So this unit did come with the software on the USB drive, but whenever I plugged that into the computer, 
it uh, would not unzip. So I'm not sure what was going on. But I was able to go to the website and download that no problem and get the software up and running here on my mini PC. Then I had to install the uh, easel program. And whenever I did that, the machine wasn't picking up. And I looked inside of the control box over here and saw the little red light on and thought, well, something's up here. Well, it turns out I hadn't pushed the power cord all the way in. The red uh, light that was in the control box was just showing that the USB was getting power, but the unit was not getting power yet. So as soon as I pushed that in better, all the stepper motors kicked in and it was ready to go. So then I went into easel and set up the machine as a new machine. And luckily in the easel program, uh, the Jinmitsu 6050 is already a preset in there. So pretty easy to get that set up. As far as the running experience goes, all of these stepper motors are quite musical whenever they are running. I uh, was not expecting that. But it did work out quite well here on my material. Um, also, the clamps that I used that came with the machine worked out really well. Um, they are a good size and I think um, I will be using those again in the future. So it did cut out a nice perfect circle right there. Now obviously my table space here is not nearly big enough to run this machine and have the control box and computer and the keyboard, all that stuff here on the same uh, space. So I am actually in the middle of building a 20 by 30 studio space that will have a dedicated spot for this machine right here. So I'll be doing a much better review in the future once I have the space to do it in. But all that to say, so far the whole machine has worked as it should once I plugged the power up correctly and uh, it functioned as you would expect here and I can't wait to change out bits and do different designs with this machine. Definitely check out the link in the description down below so you can uh, take a look at this machine for your very own. Like I said before, um, this is just a very brief review and I will be doing a lot more projects with this in the future. I'm Seth with Land of House and I will see you in the next one. Bye.